Hey everyone, it's Anthony with Policy Buff, and I bet you can't guess what this episode of How I Got the Shot is about. Unless you read the title. This is the first video in a series of three that we're going to be discussing gridded modifiers. In this episode, we're going to talk about our 7-inch reflector and the grids that go with it. But before we get started, go ahead, hit that subscribe button and that little bell to be notified when we post some sweet new content. All right, let's get into it. First off, let's talk about some of the benefits and purposes of using grids. With our 7-inch standard reflector, the beam spread is 80 degrees, and when you toss a grid on there, that narrows down that beam spread. So for example, if you're using a 20 degree grid, it will then take your beam spread from 80 degrees down to 20 degrees. We offer a set of four honeycomb grids that range in degrees from 40 to 10. We decided to do just a very basic portrait first to show the varying degrees of the grids, and we kept the model in a similar position throughout. We started with the bare seven inch reflector and worked our way down to the 10 degree grid. As you can see from these example images, the smaller the number on the grid, the tighter the beam spread. The tighter the beam spread, the less coverage you'll get on the subject that you're shooting. Grids are most commonly used for hair lights, backlights, or rim lights. They're great to provide separation between your model and the background and provide any unwanted light spillage. But since y'all know I'm anything but basic, I'm gonna show you how to create some moody portraits using a single light and my grid as my main modifier. For these images with my model tech, I wanted to create something that had drama. She's really rambunctious, super bubbly, super energetic, so to get to rein her in a little bit and do something really structured and moody was, was a challenge and a lot of fun. The setup itself was really simple. I had tech seated on the floor and I had a single link flash unit centered and boomed above her, pointed down. I chose to have tech seated on the ground as opposed to a stool or an apple box because I wanted to add to that drama by shooting from above and it was also easier on my back. Cause I'm old, so old, like Crypt Keeper old. <laughs> I stayed in one spot primarily the entire time and I directed tech to pose within that area of light. The first round of shots that we did, I used a 20 degree grid and for the last set, I used a 10 degree remix. 10 degree grid, 10 degree, that's so hard. That's like a lot of words. And for the last set, I used a 10 degree grid, which really emphasized that drama. Like any modifier, it's all about placement and seeing what works best for you and helping you achieve the look that you're going for. As a wise coworker, Kimberly, I'm looking at you behind the camera. At least I think I'm looking at you because this light is super bright. I once told me, when you're in a controlled studio environment, it's important to utilize your modeling light because you can see where the light is falling and make adjustments even before you start shooting. Take a look at a few of my favorite images from this shoot. So as you can see, Honeycomb grids can really add a creative and dramatic flair when used as your main modifier in portraits. But for product photography, it's also awesome because it can add a little bit of excitement and change things up from the traditional softbox. I hope you found this video helpful. Be sure to give us a follow over on Instagram at PolicyBuffInc and use the hashtag PolicyBuff for a chance to be featured on our page. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.